Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James Grounded Family Bible Study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly, I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son, Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Numbers, chapter 3. These also are the generations of Aaron and Moses. We're going to look at Aaron and Moses now. In the day that the Lord spake with Moses in Mount Sinai. When he goes up in Exodus 20. We're still way back in Exodus 20. In the events where we are now. The tabernacle hasn't been built yet. The clothing hasn't been built yet. These are the names of the sons of Aaron. Nadab, the firstborn, Abihu, Eleazar, Ithamar. These are the names of the sons of Aaron, the priests which were anointed. So they're already anointed. I take it back, the, the things are made. Because they have Abihu, after they've been consecrated, go in and elect the strange fire. So everything is been set up. And they have Abihu died, uh, wait a minute, the priests that were anointed, whom he consecrated to minister in the priest's office, then they have Abihu died before the Lord. They were anointed. They were in their priestly clothes. That God told Moses, call out the uncle there and drag him out by their clothes. Uh, Leviticus 10, 1 and 2, you found that. Before the Lord, when they offered strange fire, before the Lord in the wilderness of Sinai, and they had no children. And Eleazar and Ithamar ministered in the priest's office in the sight of Aaron, their father. So their father, the high priest, would oversee his sons. Eli never did oversee his sons. Oh, I heard a report and all that. Why don't you go find out? The Bible records in 1 Samuel they were doing it right there at, at, the, at the entrance to the temple, uh, the tabernacle. So only Aaron's sons are the priests. All the other Levites are helpers. All priests are Levites, but not all Levites are priests. That's very important. There's a tribe called Levi. Of them are Levites. But those that are of Aaron are the priests. So when you see John the Baptist's father going in and offering prayer at the prayer incense, at the altar of incense, that's, my mind just went there. That is Aaron's family. So when you see John the Baptist coming out, he's a Levi, he's of the Levitical priest, his father, cousins to Jesus Christ. Out of the tribe, tribe of Judah and the tribe of Levi got a little closer together in there. So in the blood of Jesus, not only Judah, but the Levites, the priests. Now the Jews were forbidden. You're of Levi, you marry into Levi. You're of Simeon, you marry into Simeon. Some people, you know, you know, we want to get away with these barriers. Elizabeth was Mary's cousin. Mary's cousin. So... My wife can figure those things it out. Doesn't, it doesn't necessarily mean that they were related by the Levitical priesthood. Yeah, but Elizabeth being of the priest. She might have been from Judah. But the astute because her husband is doing the priestly duty. Yeah, and Levi, yeah. he's of the priest. And they say that John the Baptist and Jesus were related cousins, I think it was, through Mary being cousins with Elizabeth. There's that family tread. So here we go. And some people, oh, you know, it's you know, it's okay to cross the boundaries. Not in the law, you weren't supposed to. 
But it's funny how that happens. So here we are, Levitical. We, we've done two chapters of all 12 tribes, minus one, Levi, which has been branched from Joseph into two, Ephraim and Manasseh. Now here's this Levit Levitical tribe, and we're going to go into more. Why? But let's see, Nahab and Bayou died before the Lord. When they offered strange fire before the Lord in the wilderness of Sinai. You realize that strange fire, they walk in there with a match. They didn't have lighters. And they flipped that match, or because I don't think they sat there and rubbed two sticks together. They could have taken a stick from a campfire. Campfire. I don't think they would got that far. I think they struck a match. I don't think they would got that far. Because weren't they supposed to keep using the fire? That fire the off the brazen, the brazen altar. And he originally yep. started the fire. The fire came down. When you go to, cause let's go to Leviticus 10. And it's, I don't mean ha ha, funny. It's a funny story. Leviticus 10, and we're going to have to see Leviticus 9 about what happened to these. Now, these are anointed. They were anointed. And let's see. The fire came down. All right, verse 24 of Leviticus 9. And there came fire out from the before the Lord and consumed the uh, consumed upon the altar the burnt offering. There's the brazen altar. Fire comes down from heaven. That fire, you were to take the coals, you would light the candlestick, and you write that, that altar incense. And they have by who, chapter 10, verse 1, sons of Aaron took either of them his censer, and put fire therein. So they walk in there. They grab the, the incense uh, uh, sensors. And they where that fire came from. They put the fire. Yeah, they lit something. I don't think they walked in there with strange fire. I don't think God would have allowed that. Because look at God's reaction. They're dead. Now here's the strange fire. They had been already anointed. And it's already set up. Because there's the incense, incense altar. There's the brazen altar. And it says verse number verse five, chapter ten. And they went near and carried them in their coats. That's the priestly garb that we read about. That was just for the priests. So strange fire before the Lord in the wilderness of Sinai, and had no children. Eleazar, Ithamar. These very important names because now start showing up. Minister in the priest's office in the sight of Aaron, their father. Now, it's quite interesting that Eleazar is going to make it in the promised land with Joshua and Ithamar. And I talked to a, a, a secondary pastor of a church about this. Because they'll say Joshua is the only one that made it in Caleb. No, Eleazar. Well, they were, they were older than that. They can't be too much old here. They got, I think, was it twenty years old, thirty years old? And they had to be there when those children of Israel, the forty years. And they couldn't serve the temple until they were twenty. So here they are, and they will pass over where Moses couldn't go into the promised land with Joshua. And there are age restrictions put on it. So the forty years, the men had not died out. So. Joshua, he gets to go in Caleb, because of his zeal. Eleazar, that would be, yeah, Eleazar and Ithamar will go into the promised land. And the Lord is thanking the most the same. So much in this chapter. Bring the tribe of Levi near. We haven't talked about the tribe of Levi, chapter 1 and 2. You didn't see it. You saw Manasseh and Ephraim, two from Joseph. Now here's the tribe of Levi. The missing tribe of numbers and present them before Aaron the priest that they may minister unto him not God to Aaron the high priest that is the man that's in charge of all the priests the high priest right now it's Aaron and his two sons physical Aaron hey okay, I gonna die and I think, I think it's Ithamar that becomes the high priest but we'll get to that later Lord willing and they shall keep his charge and the charge of the whole congregation before the tabernacle of the congregation to do the service of the tabernacle. Aaron, their father, is in charge 
when it comes to the priestly duties. Now, they may get married and go out and start their families, and Aaron can't have nothing to do with that. Can't tell them, oh, you guys didn't know. That's their own house. But as far as when it comes to that priestly duty, that office, that high priest is in charge. And they shall keep all the instruments of the tabernacle of the congregation. And, you know, that's the shovels, that's the snufflers, that's the, the hooks and everything we've already read about. And the charge of the church, excuse me, the children of Israel, the charge of the you got to take care of them. you got to help them. you got to guide them. you got to be for them to do the service of the tabernacle. Candlesticks, offerings, everything. Thou shalt give the Levites unto Aaron and to his sons. They are wholly given unto him out of the children of Israel. So here's one tribe wholly given to the priesthood. They're born into it. You don't light fires and try to promote somebody to the office. You don't send them off to any kind of school. They are born into this position. And we already read in, Deut uh, in Leviticus that, you know, if they had, you know, that they were dwarves, that they had scars, missing parts, they could not be as part of that offering. Thou shalt appoint Aaron and his sons. They shall wait on their priest's office. Who knows to wait? Deuter. Wait. That's where your word waiter and waitress comes from. And when you go to the book of Acts, it's not needful for us to wait on the tables. Let us seek out men. And that's where you get the office of deacon. Wait on their priest's office. And the stranger... That cometh nigh shall be put to death. No one else but Levi, no one else of the children of Aaron belongs in there. Now, do you see why? I always forget his name. John the Baptist's father. Do you see why he got in a panic when all of a sudden here's this man? Where he's in the holy place, lighting that incense for the prayers of the people. You know what he's thinking? They having to buy you. I'm going. I'm, I'm, I'm burnt up. Because no one else was supposed to be in there. So how do you know that Gabriel was, it was who he was, he said he was? Because no one else would have been allowed in there. Asa, I think it's Asa, went in there to offer up the prayer incense and got leprosy when he came out. While he's standing in there and is driven out with leprosy. You know what you knew about John the Baptist's father? He, he knew the Old Testament. He knew the stories. That's why he feared. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, And I, behold, I have taken the Levites from among the children of Israel. So that's why they're not getting the land grant. That's why they're not mentioned in chapter 1 and 2. They're mine, God says. Instead of all the firstborn that opens the matrix or a womb among the children of Israel, therefore the Levites shall be mine. So why didn't Hannah bring her firstborn son Samuel to be sacrificed in Israel. Because everything that opens up the womb to be brought to the Lord is given to the Lord. Because the Levites were of that call of the firstborn. You didn't have to give your children to God for a sacrifice. The Levites were that sacrifice. They were the called ones. Jesus Christ was the firstborn of Mary. She didn't have to sacrifice him. But he took on the priestly duty. And God knew that. That's why he set these people up. The Levites. They're the ones. Because all the firstborn are mine, says God. So instead of bringing that firstborn like Hannah did, she gave her firstborn literally to God. She didn't have to. But you look at the conspiratorial condition when Eli was the high priest and the priests were going on there. There was nobody good enough. And God took that firstborn child, Samuel, and ministered him good. The light had gone out. The word of God was, was dead. Because all the firstborn are mine. On the, on the day that I smoke all the firstborn in Egypt. So. When you look at the numbers here. I forget where it is. We may, we may come across. You're actually going to be told how many people were killed in Egypt that night. And God says, for the firstborn of Egypt, Levi. 
You do not have to kill your sons like I killed the firstborn in Egypt. That's already taken care of by the Levites. I don't have to give myself by blood to God. The firstborn of God, begotten of God, had already gave his blood for me. Has already done the service that I can't do. Judah first, let's say any guy born of Benjamin comes in. He can't do nothing in that tabernacle. He's not the right tribe. Egypt I hallowed unto me all the firstborn in Israel, both man and beast. Beast you bring to the offering. It says, if you have a firstborn of an ass, if you don't redeem him with a lamb, you're to break his neck. That lamb, you could not say, okay, uh, no, it's mine. No, it belonged to God. Hannah did something extra special when we read, especially when we talk about the story of Eli and the priesthood there. She gave her son, firstborn. And it's a picture, a type of Jesus Christ. When the priesthood is all vile and wicked as they were in Jesus' time. The firstborn in Israel, both men and beasts, mine shall they be. I am the Lord. And the Lord spake unto Moses in the wilderness of Sinai, saying, Number the children of Levi. Chapter 1. Now we're going to count them. After the house of their fathers, by their families, every male from a month old, it was the, the, the in chapter 1, it was 20 years old and able to go off to war. Now every male, every male from a month old and upward. I don't care if they got a physical deformity. I can't, don't care if they're too old to fight. If they are a month old and upward males, you're going to count them. That did not happen with the tribes of Israel. Everyone that was 20 years and under was not counted. Every man that was 20 and above and could not fight was not numbered. So the Levites are restricted from war duty. Do you know a particular religion out there that says we can't fight? Who proclaims to be of Jehovah? Who proclaims of, of, the, of the kingdom? And gee, I wonder what they proclaim themselves to be of Levi. They got to be because this is the only tribe called not to fight. They ain't offering no spiritual sacrifice to God. God does not approve of them. They deny Jesus Christ as God. And Moses numbered them according to the word of the Lord as he commanded. And these were the sons of Levi, of Joseph, um, excuse me, of Jacob, of Leah, by their names, Gershon, Kohath, and Merari. These are three sons of Levi. And these are the names of the sons of Gershon by their families, Libni and Shimni. And the sons of Korah by their families, Amran, Izirar, Hebron, a zeal. So Gershon has two boys. Kohath has four boys. And the sons of Merari by their families, Mahalai and Mushai. Not many boys. Merari has two. There's eight boys of, of the tribe that come from the grandsons of Levi, the great grandsons. Let's go to Exodus 6 18. You didn't realize that this was repeated earlier. Exodus 6, 18. And this is this is important of position now. Not only family. Exodus 6, 18. The sons of Koah, Amran, Izahar, and Hebron, and Azil. Um, Hebron and Azil. Okay, those are the boys. They match. But there's more importance than that. The years of the life of Kohath were 133 years. The sons of Merari were Mahio and Mushai. There they are. These are the families of Levi according to their generation. Just what we just read. And Amran of Kohath, Portan, took him Jochebed, his father's sister to wife. Now there's that, there's that family thing that I, I don't aunt I would think well isn't that kind of like a close relationship between Elizabeth and Mary again 
I would assume. Not the same title, but there it is again. And she bared him, Aaron and Moses. And we know Miriam later. And the years of the life of Aaron were 137 years. So back over in Numbers chapter 3. When we read verse 19, Amram, there is Moses and Aaron's father. Moses is also the priestly tribe under Kohath. Now it's important as we're going to read further into this chapter. Not only was Aaron a priest... Not just a Levite, but a priest called by God. But you see, Aaron was the one called by God, the priest, the high priest, and his children. Is Moses a child of Abraham? I mean, boy, where did that go? Is Moses a child of Aaron? No. Oh. Moses is a Levitical, but he's not a priest. Because he's not a child of Aaron. All priests are Levites. But not all Levites are priests. But, but Moses is put in that office because he does do the service that God allows. Jesus Christ is not a Levi. But God has allowed him to put into that office of priesthood. And that's what washes away my sins. So there is... The family of Aaron and Moses, verse 19. The sons of Moriah, the family Muhai, Mahai, told you I wasn't going to be able to pronounce it the same, and Mushai. These are the families of the Levites, not all priests, according to the house of their fathers. And Gershon was the family of the Limnites, the family of the Shimnites, and the families of the Gershonites. Those that were numbered of them according to the number of the males, from a month old and upward, even those that were numbered of them were 7,500. 7,500 Gershonites. Now see, we're back in Numbers 1, but we're talking about one Pacific tribe now. And the charge, wait a minute, and the families of Gershonites pitched, Behind the tabernacle westward. So now we see Leviticus chapter, I mean Numbers chapter 2. We see the census, the pole, and then we see their position. As we saw in Numbers 1 and 2 with the children of Israel. Gershon right now has 7,500 and he will camp to the west of that tabernacle. And then when you go outside of that, you will have to the west of that would be the Ephraim camp of 108,100 soldiers. And the chief of the house of the father of the Gershonite shall be Elisaphath, the son of Lael. Now, and the charge of the sons of Gershon, here we go. In the tabernacle of the congregation shall be the tabernacle and the tent. And the coverings thereof, the ram skin, the badger skin, the boards, the hanging for the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, that first veil that the priest would go in. This is their assignment. This is their priesthood assignment. Now, they're not priests. They're Le Levites, but they do have a charge of that tabernacle. And here it is. When they move, they pack up, and when they, they, they stop, they unpack. This is their job. God has an order. God is orderly. The hangings for the tabernacle of congregation. The hangings for the court. And the curtain for the door of the court. That's the outer veil that the people of Israel come up. Which is by the tabernacle and by the altar roundabout. And the cords of it for all the service there. So the Merarites are in charge of everything that's the tent and the walls of the tabernacle. Uh, well, Gershon. That's their charge. That's a big charge. Because if they didn't do their job, they would never be set up and there would be no veils protecting the people from God. 
It's an important job. And Koath, verse 27. Now remember Koath? That's the family of Amram. This is the priest of Aaron and his sons. But there are people who are not of Aaron. Moses and Miriam who are not priests. And Moses and his sons who are not priests, but this is their job. This is very important. And the Kohaths were the family of the Amorites. So Moses is an Amorite, if you can say that. And the family of the Israelites, and the family of the Hebronites, and the family of the Israelites, these are the families of Kohites. Now there's going to be a rebellion against the Kohites later on in Numbers. And the number of the males from month old and upward were 8,600. 8,600 Koharites. They're doing better than the Gershonites. Over a thousand more. Keeping the charge of the sanctuary. And the families of the sons of Kohath shall pitch on the side of the tabernacle southward. And that is under, let me check over here. That's Reuben. 151,450. So here's the temple. Here's the southern dire direction. You got the Kohites, and then you got Simi. Uh, what did I say? Yeah. Reubenites. Okay. Now let's see what the Kohites do. Besides Aaron and his sons being the priests, let's see what the family of Amram, Moses and his ch uh, and his brothers. Let's see what they do. And yet they get upset with Moses and Aaron for taking on too much. Ready? And the families of the sons of Kohath shall pitch on the side of the tabernacle southward. And the chief of the house of the father of the families of the Kohites shall be Eliasman, the son of Uziel. And their charge shall be the ark. Whoa! Those staves goes on the shoulders of the Kohites. And we're coming up to Numbers chapter 7. They're going to say that the children of Israel came with wagons. And it's going to record by the Holy Spirit that they don't get those wagons because the ark and all that is to be carried on their shoulders. They get the table. So in David's time to do things right, when he brings that ark on, on, the, on the wagon, though it's wrong, He's got the family of Amram, of the Kohites here, carrying that ark. The table and the candlestick. And the altars, plural, including the brazen altar. And the vessels of the sanctuary wherewith they minister. And that hanging, that's the inside veil that Jesus rent. And all the service thereof. They... We'll go into, after Aaron and his sons covers these items with the coverings of the tabernacle. Then they will go in and pick it up and put it on their shoulders and walk off. And when that ark is moving, especially in the time of, of, of I can't forget the name, Joshua. Here's the Kohites. And Eliezer. The son of Aaron, the priest, shall be chief over the chief of the Levites, because he's a priest, have the oversight of them that keep the charge of the sanctuary. He's in charge. He's a Levite and he's a priest. The Kohites are Levites, but they're not priests. they got to have the priest over them. So you have Aaron the high priest, and Eleazar is the chief of the chief of the families. And every time that cloud moved or that fire moved, here you go, Numbers chapter 3. Everybody has a specific job to take this thing down and begin moving. And then when that fire stopped or the pillar of the cloud stopped, then these guys had to set up and put it back together. Of uh, Merari was the family of the Mahites, the family of the Mushites. These are the family of Merari. 
And those that were numbered of them according to the number of all the males from a month old and upward were 6,200. Again, 6,200. They're the least. Kohaz has more than Gershom. Now, Merari, the chief of the house of the father of the family of Merari was Zareel, the son of Abihio. These shall pitch on the side of the tabernacle northward, and that was Dan, Dan's tribe. And under the custody and charge of the sons of Merari shall be the boards of the tabernacle. That was under the, the, the gopher, the ramskin dyed red, the boards. Of the tab and the bars thereof, we already read about that, and the pillars thereof, of the gateway, and the poles, the sockets thereof, and all the vessels thereof, and all the that service there. So they would be the ones that have to bend down and pick up those, those brace, the brass sockets out of the ground. It's their job to make sure they got them all. And the pillars of the court round about, and their sockets... And their pins, you got to have all the pins and the cords, the ropes. That's what cords are, ropes. But those that encamp before the tabernacle toward the east, even before the tabernacle congregation eastward, shall be Moses and Aaron and his son. So when we look at the east, we run back over here, there's Judah. Who's next to Judah? Moses and Aaron. Who's of the tribe of Judah? Jesus Christ. And what's he close to? <coughs> Moses said you should be a, a prophet like unto me. Who takes over the high priestly stand? Jesus Christ. There he is. Keeping the charge of the sanctuary for the charge of the children of Israel. And the stranger that cometh nigh shall be put to death. There's, you can't bypass that high priest. You can't bypass Jesus Christ. You can't say... Oh, with good intentions as Uzzah had, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go in there and help. Uzzah said, you know, that ark is shaking. Let me just. And there ought to be order in the church. If you're going to look at this the type of church, there is positions for people to be in. And there are positions for people not to be in. And if God would strike the stranger that steps into the ministry that doesn't belong there, strike them dead, we wouldn't have these radio and television and mega churches. But we're under grace. We have been warned by 66 books of the Bible. We are told to study, that show thyself approved unto God, rightly divine the word of truth, that if that person does not to be speaking, that guy is not of God, we're just to walk away from him and go start a proper assembly. Your modern church people today would not survive if they were under the law. And yet, uh, let's see, let me try to get the name here. I believe it was Ephesians, the Ephesians, were the ones that tried to put themselves back under the law. Had they put themselves back under the law, God would struck those deceivers down dead. See, we're not under the law. We are under studying and reading the Bible and say, hey, you're wrong. And Paul named them. And he told the congregation, that person is wrong. Don't you listen to him. On this account, on that account, with this scripture and that scripture. How do you know they were wrong in the Old Testament? They burnt up. Most of them burnt up. But that always didn't happen either. God said, I will give you some false prophets just to prove to see who you are. But when it came to this tabernacle, you didn't mess with God. If that tabernacle, that temple was served today like the church, you would have smoking piles of Ahab and Abihu all over the place. But we're not under the law. There are people vile that go in and have a church and God says, okay, fine, I'll just judge you later. I'll just send preachers out there to preach the truth and I'll send preachers out there and allow them to preach the lies. Deception. All that were numbered in Levites, 
which Moses and Aaron numbered at the commandment of the Lord throughout their families. All the male from north, from a month old and upward, 22,000. You say, why did David get in trouble for numbering Israel? Because it was a status point. Of, Look how good we are. Look how important we are. God says, listen, you're building yourself today as a nation. And you need to know who you are and what you are and what you have. Later on, it's not going to be so. And the Lord said unto Moses, Number all the firstborn of the males of the children of Israel from a month old and upward. Take the number of the names. Now we're going to get into the redeem. Anybody that's a month old, firstborn only. And thou shalt take the Levites for me, I am the Lord, instead of all the firstborn among the children of Israel. So Hannah gave to the Lord wonderfully. Not all the mothers ever did that. And they didn't have to do that because God said, I'll take that Levite. But when you see the spiritual condition that Hannah was in of Israel, she was a remarkable woman because God answered her prayer. God did well things for her. It's almost like she knew the Bible and knew what condition. Lord God, if I don't give you my son to do right. And yet people say, well, I didn't grow up in the right community. I didn't grow in the right area. I didn't have the proper parents. You realize who Samuel had raising him up and he, raised, he was rose correctly? He grew up with priests that were eating the raw meat and sleeping with the women at the gate of the tabernacle. And the high priest, the father, like, oh, I wish you guys just knock it off. I mean, I got a bad report from you today. That was the condition in Eli's time. Thou shalt take the Levites from me, I am the Lord, instead of all the firstborn among the children of Israel. So see, even the priests, God said, you know what? I'm but they died in battle, and the ark was taken. And you come up with the name Ichabod, the glory has departed. Instead of all the... Listen, if, if you're foul and you deceive the people in a matter of a church, in the name of God, you will be judged and you will be found wanting. And there are different degrees of hell. When you call yourself assembly to God, you better do it the way God wants you to do it. And we have the New Testament for the church. The books. I am the Lord. Instead of all the firstborn among the children of Israel. And the cattle of the Levites. Instead of the firstlings among the cattle of the children of Israel. Where did most of those offerings get? Where did that lamb come for the morning offering and the evening offering? It came from the Levites. Sheep. And God said, I'll take those rather than you just keep yours. You've got certain animals that belong to me. But as far as the Levites, they're all mine. And Moses numbered as the Lord commanded him all the firstborn among the children of Israel. And all the firstborn males by the number of names from a month old and upward. Of those that were numbered of them were twenty and two thousand two hundred and three score and thirteen. 22,373. 22,273. That may be possibly how many that were killed that night of the firstborns in Egypt. And the Lord spoke on it because he speaks about the firstborn of the beast and the firstborn of, of the man. Kind. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take the Levites instead of all the firstborn of the children of Israel, and the cattle of the Levites instead of the cattle, in, instead of the cattle, and the Levites shall be mine. I am the Lord. And for those that are to be redeemed, bought back, of the two hundred and three score and thirteen of the firstborn of the children of Israel, which are more than the Levites. There are more than there are more firstborn here than there are the Levites. By two hundred and seventy-three, thou shalt even take five shekels apiece by the pole head count, 
after the shekel, the, after the shekel, the sanctuary, shall thou take. The shekel is 20 gers. That really helped us out. <laughs> but we got now the Bureau of Sta Standards of the Economy set by God. Okay. Thou shalt give the money wherewith the odd number of them to the redeemed. That which is over and above what, how many Levites there were. So 22,000 of these firstborn I'll take. Problem is you've got 273 more than there were Levites. Those 273 more, well, you've got to be redeemed. And Moses took the redemption money of them that were over and above that which was that were redeemed by the Levites. I'm just getting this now. I read this how many times. Uh, of the firstborn, the children of Israel took he the money, a thousand three hundred and three score and ten shekels. Five shekels. That's one thousand three hundred sixty-five shekels. After the shekel, the sanctuary. And Moses gave the money of them that were redeemed unto Aaron and to his sons, according to the Lord, as the Lord commanded Moses. Now we have a count. We have the service of the priests. And we're going to keep reading more about the priests in the next chapter, Lord Woman. But we're getting, we're laying out the children of Israel. We're getting them ready for the promised land. God has set an orderly fashion that will be followed. And when you do get into 1 Samuel, it's not being followed. When you get to the time of Jeremiah, it's definitely not being followed. And when you get to the time of Christ, it's definitely not getting followed. And all the time, they've fallen. 1 Samuel, the ark is taken. Jeremiah, they're taken and the city's destroyed to Babylon. Jesus Christ, look where they are today. Because they would not obey what Moses said.